Fighting Championship is back in Edinburgh with a banger of a card featuring two of the brightest flyweights in the nation in our main event for Fury FC 70 on UFC Fight Pass. But first, we get things started with a stacked prelims card featuring the best local amateurs in the Valley. It is time for these fighters to unleash the Fury live from the Burnt Ogden Arena in Edinburgh. I'm Raheel Ramsay, joined by the Black Belt himself, Michael Alexander, and Fury FC 70 is here, but these amateurs are ready to show out, Michael. Yeah, ton of amateur debuts tonight, looking to get in the hearts and minds of the Fury family, and looking forward to seeing these guys get in there. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get things started right now by joining the third member of the broadcast team inside the cage. Here is Wayne Leckenberg. <laughs> Good afternoon, Fight fans, and welcome to the Burt Ogden Arena in Edinburgh, Texas, for Fury FC 70, Lozoya versus McLean. But first, please welcome to the cage for your opening preliminary contest, Richard Gallego. Richard Gallego setting the tempo, the tone for the day, making his walk out. Look at that, look, we give even the amateurs a treat when you get the little fireworks in the back to get you amped up. Has fought already uh, and made his debut earlier this month in October and lost via submission. But, hey, it's all about the experience with the amateurs, right, Mike? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, a lot of times it always cracks me up whenever I see these amateurs. They'll get a win. They'll they'll fight the next week if they'll let them. And so they're, they're, they're really ambitious. They're really, you know, especially when you get that first win. You know, before your first loss, either one. It's, you know, it, it's, it's something where you want to get right back in there and get back on the mountain. By now, San Antonio, Texas, representing our, our yellow JJ and MMA. So love that. You can see a lot of local talent, of course, from the Valley area, but also San Antonio. You see a lot of the fighters from San Antonio get a chance to uh, make that short drive to the Valley and fight here for Fury. And of course, we fight, you know, we do these shows in San Antonio as well, but this is almost like San Antonio too, which I love. Yeah, for sure. And those guys down there love fighting in front of that home crowd. All right, let's meet his opponent. Here's Wayne. Please welcome to the red corner, Abner Castro. Abner Castro, second time inside the Fury Manager game. He won his game fight at Fury FC 61 against Jesse Pencoja with that inverted triangle choke. I don't know if you remember that or not, but a really nice prospect. But he had a super sweet uh, submission there. Yeah, and he's got a movie star name too, Abner Castro. That's a great villain name for, uh, for a movie. But yeah, I do remember. A uh, very exciting guy. This guy is, you know, he's one of those guys that were. Really looking forward to, to seeing him get in there. And, you know, young guy at age 19. So I think he was still 18 whenever he fought last time yeah. for us at 61. So uh, he was still in high school then, if I remember right, but or yeah. just graduated. We also see Angel Cortez there. Uh, hug your homies. Remember him? Oh, He's yeah. There, right there uh, in his camp as well. Another Fury amateur. So a lot of cool local talent uh, in this area. But Abner is one to definitely watch out for. Uh, uh, fighting out of Mission, Texas, and represent low 956. You're going to see a lot of fighters from that gym throughout the night. Let's look at our tail of the tape for this opening preliminary bout. In this catchweight bout at 120, the 19-year-old Abner Castro has the height advantage, but loses on the reach advantage. And our tail of the tape brought to you by Redbo Smart Healthy Living. Make sure you go to redbo.com. Use promo code FURY for 20% off their smart scales and massage guns. Nice touch of the gloves there, a little respect like that. Get that going, and let's get the official introduction. Here's Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest brought to you by Space City Collective is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series at a catch weight of 120 pounds. Introducing to you first fighting out of the blue corner. Standing five feet six inches tall, he weighed in officially at 116.2 pounds. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, today he seeks his first amateur victory. This is Richard Gallego. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. 
Standing 5 feet 7 inches tall, he weighed in at 118.8 pounds. Fighting out of Mission, Texas, he holds an amateur record of one win. No losses. This is Abner Castro. Your referee in charge, Nick Gonzalez. The ghost, Nick Gonzalez. Mainstay right here in the valley. Let's get this fight going. Blue gloves for Gallego, red for Castro. Abner Castro already throwing those big straight punches. I really like everything it, it, that he's doing so far, and we saw it in his first fight too. Technically, it's correct. He stands in a, in a good stance. Doesn't make many mistakes here. There's one thing about the Flow 956 fighters that I've noticed as well, especially their amateurs, they're very technically sound. They trust their mechanics, which is nice to see, and they don't overreact, which is huge for amateurs. Yeah, guy, we got to be careful here. We saw him in Castro with some tricky submissions last time we saw him in the cage, and here he is again in this high guard from the bottom. Now they're trying to slam him just a little bit. Probably a little bit of a, of a energy waste, in my opinion. You know, picking up somebody and slamming them down with really no no consequence there. You can see Abner Castro trying to put that shield in. Back to guard now. Yeah, from this spot, Raheel, last time we saw him, it was very, very tricky. We saw him go up to high guard just a little bit ago to try to maybe switch to that arm bar. But it looks like he really, really wants that triangle again. And you can see that Gallego definitely saw that on tape and is really pushing uh, some pressure on Castro so he can't operate and try to pull something here which is nice to see yeah and technically you want you know he wants to be a little bit taller whenever he's throwing those punches from there because when his posture down uh when uh, when abner castro is controlling his posture from the bottom you're always at risk there of, of getting that arm pushed through or switching the hips around to an arm bar especially whenever they're this close to the cage abner castro could take that left foot put it over on the cage and use that kind of whip him around and snap a submission on here pretty 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 quick here in the one minute mark, don't forget these are amateur rounds, so three minutes, three rounds max for the preliminary broadcast here. We do have one pro fight, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But for the most part, these are all going to be amateur rules. Yeah, and you see here Abner putting that, that left foot on the cage like we talked about. Trying to get the close a little bit. But Gallego doing a good job of keeping him square on the cage. He's staying postured up when it, in the important times. When, during the transitions, he's posturing up. And Castro's trying to pull something here. Maybe Gallego, I think. See Wayne Leggett in the back there. Eric Garcia as well. Yeah, I thought we agreed we weren't going to put Wayne on camera anymore. But I guess that's uh, <laughs> next show. By the way, he is still the best dressed man in MMA. I forgot to say that. Yeah, for sure. Earlier. So my bad, Wayne. I thought you changed your mind about that or something. I'm coming for the title, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my T-shirt and uh, jacket today. Yeah, you see these guys kind of scrapping now here from the bottom. Guy go doing a good job. I mean, even though, you know, not a lot done in there, we have to, I think we'd have to give Guy Eagle that. He, you know, he got the takedown, uh, ended the round on top, kind of stayed in control the whole time. Not really any uh, any definite submission attempt from there. Definitely the, the face sorry of Castro as well. You can see Pepper with some shots starting that little threading around the eyes. So definitely, I, I would go Gallego as well. Okay? Yeah, he definitely took a little bit of damage, but you know, the, I think the takedown and the control uh, ruled that round for me. Look at our round one highlights here. Hey. Yeah, a little bit of the takedown. The, the round kind of started, you know, kind of spent the whole time in this position. Uh, Abner Castro throwing up a few submission attempts, uh, but very, very uh, lackluster submission attempts in that first round. Not a lot of opportunity there given by Gallego. Both these guys would like to see this on the feet a little bit more. Really good striking from both guys. It'd be a good chance to display this. Round two, here we go. Yeah, I would imagine Gallego was probably looking for the same thing he looked for in round one. Going to look for a takedown. You see the technical striking here of Abner Castro is starting to land a little bit on Gallego. Definitely not a place he wants to be. He's not going to be able to take too many of those. 
Come to kick delivers it right this Gallego. Yeah, Gallego went in a few shots of his own there. Both guys technically for amateurs pretty pretty good. I mean, not making not making many mistakes. You see Gallego's kind of pulling his chin back just a little bit, standing a little tall after he after he punches. Maybe a little uh, mistake. Yeah, there. maybe an amateur mistake there yeah. uh, from Abner Castro with that spinning back fist. Uh, without really being engaged, you got to be careful whenever you're doing stuff like that. And right back to it looks like a uh, guy who may be yeah. bleeding. Yeah, it looks like he's got a cut on his eye, and uh, I don't know exactly when that would have happened. Maybe they bumped heads or something during the the takedown attempt, or maybe something on that spinning back fist. Maybe the elbow caught him or something. Let's take a look at that replay between rounds. He is coming down from Gallego. Yeah, he's bleeding pretty bad. And, and remember, Hill, in these amateur fights, they don't let him go as long as the as the pros. If they think there's too much blood, or if there's a chance that it's getting in his eyes, uh, you know, they will stop this fight. They don't allow the amateurs to take as much damage. Very, very safe when it comes to these amateur guys. Gallego looking really good with that top pressure still, showing no signs of slowing down. I just think even with the even with the bleeding, if this if he stays the if he stays here like this, he's probably going to get round two also. So Abner Castro's got to do something, throw up some significant submission attempts, or at least try to get up. He needs to wrestle up here. Yeah. Doesn't look like wrestling is is part of his uh, part of his uh, his bag right now, but uh, definitely like we saw in his last fight, Jiu-Jitsu is. So uh, maybe trying to wear Gallego out a little bit. 40 seconds left in round two. Yeah, not much happening here for Castro in terms of trying to pull something or showing any signs of trying to get out. It's been all Gallego. Good work from the top still. Yeah, there's that there's that push off the cage there. Ooh, nice attempt at a at a triangle there. Looked like he wanted the arm bar, was given the triangle, but guy go quick to get out of that out of position for that. I wonder, how, up. I wonder how slippery it is with all that blood as well, Michael. Oh man, it's very slippery, I can tell you for sure. Alright, so we go to our final round. Yeah, let's see if we can see where maybe that uh, if it was that spinning back fist or what it was that landed to cut the eye of, of uh, Gallego. Maybe that left hand there, that left hand right over the top. Doesn't look like he's bleeding there yet. We see that that left hand kind of, maybe not. It's really difficult to tell. I mean, you've got a couple of spots, but yeah, you can see the blood coming down right there. Definitely. He definitely landed somewhere. It must have been a headbutt or something like that. Real, really difficult to tell, but he's bleeding pretty bad. Let's see if Cutman Joe can slow that down. I'm going to say yes because he's the best in the business and give Rich Gallego another round. That's what it's all about. And sure enough, there he goes. Already closed. Yeah, you can hardly tell he's even in a fight. Looks like maybe his lip is busted also. Really hard to tell if it's just blood on his lip or if it's split open, but maybe it's our special effects department. Yeah, because I, I still can't tell where it is coming from. The budget's going up. Yeah, and I wonder if maybe it's his hairline or something <laughs> like that. But we'll see if it opens up again where it comes from. But it's hard to tell in that replay. Nonetheless, third round. Big slam there from Gallego. Yeah, another big takedown from Gallego, and you know that's that's a it's good for Gallego. You know, whenever you're bleeding, whenever you've got a cut, you don't want that to get any bigger. Um, and and really, uh, Abner Castro is not shown to be affected from this position, unlike last time in his, in his debut. Uh, not able to get those submissions locked up like he did before. So one thing I do want to go back. We were saying when Gallego was walking out, I was saying it. Uh, he actually fought in October of 2021, not October 21st of this month. Uh, I don't think the commission will allow that. Uh, but it was last year, so it's been a year since his debut amateur fight. So just want to correct that. Yeah, he's definitely shown some improvement since then. 
Looks like that cut's open back up there. He's bleeding again pretty bad. He's going to dole out some damage. I think if he, you know, if this keeps going the way it is here, I think he's got this fight wrapped up 30-27. But, uh, you know, you just never know how they look at this. You know, Alex talks a lot uh, about damage and uh, kind of what, what they look for. And you see maybe a... Uh, that uh, up kick, point. Yeah. Was it the up kick that connected? That's why? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what that would be a point for. Is up kicks, I mean, he, the... Uh, he, I, maybe he, he, he was down. It seemed like he was standing up, but maybe I didn't... Wasn't able to catch it. We'll catch that on the replay, see if it's something that we can we can see. But if he if he's a downed opponent, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to kick a downed opponent in the face. So, um, so yeah, foot strikes are illegal for a, for a downed opponent. I think that it had to be that because it did connect on the face. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll see if it was uh, if he was down, but we're gonna say yes because the ghost Nick Gonzalez did take that point away. Yeah, you see that up kick right there. You see that knee right there. He's down, so uh, not much you can do there. I mean, he didn't even give him a, a yeah. uh, warning, so that he must have thought it was pretty serious. But, yeah, the knee was down, so to kick a downed opponent, just not allowed to do that. And we'll show you that in the replay after this round. 30 seconds left. It's been all Richard Gallego. Yeah, Richard Gallego doing a good job of, of controlling Castro from the top. Had some big takedowns in every round. Nick Gonzalez breaking them up, get some action to end this round and this fight. Yeah, Nick wants to see some swinging and banging in the last 10 seconds. So Gallego wants no part of it. He doesn't want to make sure, he wants to make sure that cut doesn't go any further. There it is. All right, so we are going to go to the judges' scorecard. See how the judges score this, and also gives us an insight uh, to how the judges might be scoring the entire night here at Fury FC 70. What are they going to value? I think uh, Gallego is going to win this one unofficially, but we'll see. Yeah, I can't imagine a scenario where the point taken away and then the control that they had on those three rounds that uh, that uh, Gallego doesn't win this fight. But uh, you know. Admiral Castro's got some work to do here. You see that? You see right there. There's that. And then if they show the knee just a little bit, you cannot kick a guy whenever this knee right there. You see that knee is down. You cannot kick those uh, up to the face whenever whenever you've got a downed opponent. So that's the reason for the score. It's not it's not usually usual that they uh, don't warn them first, but um, you know, not surprised uh, in that situation that a point was taken. Must have been something they discussed in the rules meeting. Sure. And, and they probably said, look, it's going to be a zero tolerance policy. Yep. Uh, we did see that last week at our first ever Fury Challenger Series. Uh, the downed opponent up kick. So maybe it's fresh on everyone's mind. That's why. But we'll see what happens here. Let's get our score tabulated. Wayne running around the cage. Crowd already showing out here at the Burt Ogden Arena, one of our favorite broadcast spots now. Love it. There's something special about the Valley. They love their fighters. So much heart. Yeah, good showing this time for Gallego. Um, you know, Admiral Castro got a little bit of work to do. Uh, maybe needs to add some wrestling to his game, you know, but you know, it's an it's an amateur fight yeah. So this is a good learning experience for these guys a good fight to go the distance uh, You know, it's always good as an amateur in my opinion to go the distance at least once By the way fury is back next week. We are in Houston for fury FC 71 next Sunday same start time for our prelims and for our main broadcast on the UFC Fight Pass. Then we have our final broadcast of the year, Fury FC 72 from Houston as well on December 18th. We'll recap a little bit more, but let's go inside to Wayne to see how the judges score this. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by Space City Collective.
All three judges score the fight 30 to 26, declaring a winner by unanimous decision, Richard Gallego. Congratulations to Richard Gallego picking up his first ever amateur win. It feels so good to get that first one out of the way. And as you mentioned, it's got to feel good to go the distance and really push yourself as far as you can under these set rules. Yeah, and to win against a guy who won the way Abner Castro did last time probably feels pretty good. All right, let's get our next fight going. Here's Wayne. Please welcome to the blue corner for your next fight, Enrique Rodriguez. Enrique Rodriguez, fighting out of Brownsville. Nickname is Broly. I, I, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Broly. Yeah, I wonder if uh, <laughs> I wonder what the what the origin of that nickname is. And you know, we talked about this a lot on here, Hill, that we don't think that nicknames should be given to yourself. That no. somebody has to give you that nickname. So it's always interesting whenever you you can tell the ones that give them to themselves. But the, uh, the stuff like Broly, I guarantee you that's something that's yeah, something he's been given. I'm, I'm curious what the origin of that is. Making his way out for this catch weight fight. 182 catch weight. Very specific. Yeah, a few catch weight fights on this. I know we had some like some weird things happen on this card over here. We had uh, a bunch of guys, like a couple guys get the flu and a couple other things. So yeah, it was a it was a really difficult uh, kind of scramble there at the end. But uh, but yeah, catch weight fight between these two guys. Um, and again, these amateur fights, you know, you want to make sure that you're doing it right, that you're doing it safe, that you're healthy during the fight. So some guys don't even cut weight whenever they're doing amateur fights. Some guys do to get used to cutting weight. Uh, but yeah, in this case, 182-pound uh, uh, catch weight. This, this guy's huge for 182 pounds. He is 5'11", also making his debut. We have a lot of debuts here on our prelims. So inside the Fury FC amateur cage for the first time, and let's meet his opponent. Here's Wayne Leggett. Please welcome to the red corner, Jonathan Marez. Jonathan Marez hasn't fought since November of 2019 when he beat Gregory Lopez. So had that amateur debut, and it's been a while. Man, and Jonathan Marez, I mean, for Hill, we're, uh, we're children of the 90s, so we got We see that uh, that flat top there that he has, the kid and play flat the top. Play. I like it. Yeah, for sure. A little house party about to happen here in the Fury Cage. Oh, man. If he gets the win and doesn't do the dance, yes, I'll be very disappointed. Yes. You think he even knows? Man, I we'll hope have so. To ask him <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I Just hope a, he knows. Yeah. Style is a... It's a... Uh, it's a flat, it's a flat timeline, right? Yeah, a flat sure. circle, yeah. as uh, we saw in True Detective. Yeah, <laughs> it just always comes back, man. That's right. Yeah, the mullet's back. The high top fade is back. Yeah. Shout out to Quinn Ewers. Let's look at our tail of the tape for our second preliminary fight in this catchweight bout, as we mentioned. The 34-year-old Jonathan Marez with the height advantage and losing on the reach. To Enrique Rodriguez, a 27-year-old. Both fighters did make weight for this catch weight bout. Well, that hair is really tall. <laughs> yeah, did he? Did we measure it yep. with the hair? Yeah, I was gonna say. Or is it forehead measurement? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Here's Wayne for our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Renfo is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series at a catch weight of 182 pounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 183.2 pounds. Fighting out of Brownsville, Texas, today he makes his amateur debut. This is Enrique Rodriguez. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Standing six feet tall, he weighed it officially at 178.8 pounds. Fighting out of Mission, Texas, he holds an amateur record of one win. 
no losses. This is Jonathan Mares. Your referee in charge of the action, Frank Colazzo. Really, you hear that crowd for both of these guys. Both of these guys are pretty local there, so you hear that crowd lighten up for both of these guys. This is, I, I mean, I look, I love all of our venues that we broadcast from, but this is by far the coolest because of the way the, the lights dim out in the crowd and get the center focus of the cage itself. It's so much fun. This, and this crowd is showing out, showing up in both of the arena. Little high kick slip there from Marez in the red gloves. Blue for Rodriguez. Man, these guys are here to bang. I love it. <laughs> yeah, these guys are not. It doesn't look like any part of them wants to go to the ground. Marez fell on the ground there. And uh, uh, Rodriguez didn't have, have even attempt to go down there with him. Let him get right back to his feet. Fresh slate watching these guys. Not much tape on them, obviously. One making his debut, one hasn't fought in three years. Yeah, and even if we had tape on him from three years ago, you know, that's a it's a completely different fighter than it was three years ago. So not much we history we could tell you on that. But um, but yeah, these guys are swinging for the fences right now. Nice front kicks from Mares. Both guys landing pretty regularly. It's left hand in there. Oh, did get clipped there and then ended up tripping as well. Man, Enrique Rodriguez was winding up. He wanted a home run off that one. See, Mario's yeah. got a little bit of blood coming over the right eye there. Man, this guy crowd is going nuts for these amateurs. Love it. Yeah, this is what they like to see. These these kind of fights are crowd favorite fights. There's two guys just going in there and banging. You know, they're kind of locked up right now, but you see it won't stay that way long. <laughs> Rodriguez swinging for the fences. <laughs> nice body shots there. Ooh, Rodriguez just landed a hard right hand there. This could be the end. He is walking him down. Oh, and just gets tied up. Yeah, he's re Mars is really, really tired. If Enrique lands right here, this is going to be one of those things where this might be over. With, this might be over with one punch. Jab. One, two, and down goes Mares. This go. is going to be enough. That is it. That yeah. is it. Rodriguez with the finish there. Landed a couple of big, big shots. Mars went right down to his butt. And Rodriguez landing those final blows to finish that. I told you, Raheel, they don't let these amateurs go very long. You land a few unprotected shots, they're, they're definitely going to stop it. Good stoppage by the referee there. Huge debut win for Enrique Rodriguez. That was a fun yeah. fight, man. <laughs> yeah, man, Enrique Rodriguez wasn't playing around. His coach is in there coming to try to pick him up. But like I said, he's a pretty big 185er, so unsuccessful in getting him off of his feet. Take a look at our highlights to see how Jonathan Mares got kid and played. Yeah. I had, to, I had to throw that in there for our producer. Yeah, you see Raheel, I mean, neither guy wanted to go to the ground. You could tell these guys wanted to bang it out right from the start. Maybe a, a slip there. Nope, a left hand that landed just a little bit. You see that right hand, then a left hand, then a couple of unprotected shots. If you're not defending yourself or trying to get up, the referee's going to jump in there pretty quick. Nice finish there by Enrique Rodriguez. And what a way to get your win in your sexy zebra shorts. Yeah. Also looks like sexy zebra. Anyway, yeah. right? <laughs> All right, let's get a win to make this official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Colazzo calls for a stop to the action. Two minutes, 26 seconds into the very first round. Declaring a winner by TKO, Enrique Rodriguez. Congratulations to Enrique Rodriguez. And nice to see Jonathan Marez get back in there in the cage for his second fight. Yeah, man, looks like they just went over there and made plans for a, maybe a rematch. They <laughs> <laughs> There's the, let's see how 
Yeah, you see these final shots here, Rito. Anytime you're just covering up and, you know, the referee is standing right there, laying a couple of clean shots around those hands, it's, it's pretty much done. All right, let's go to Wayne to meet our next fighter. Please welcome to the blue corner, Joe Perez. Joe Perez making his way out for this 120 pound catch weight bout. Joe Perez, third time inside the Fury Amateur Cage, coming off a win over Gage Harper in May in San Antonio at Fury FC 63, a fight, of course, that we call. Uh, if you remember, Michael, he has a crazy pace and really leaves himself open sometimes by taking too much of a risk. So he's our favorite kind of fighter to call, man. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's you got to keep up here, guys, because this is, it's going to be a high pace, and he will take some shots. He's not a player to take some shots to get in there and land his own. So always kind of interesting whenever you go in there. He's came up on the on the upside two times out of three. So uh, it's worked out for him so far uh, above 500. Let's see if he can keep it that way today. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, represent RGL of BJJ and MMA. I promise I'll get that correct. R -E -R -D -L. I, see, I can't say it. A R G U E L L E O. The double L is going me off. Yeah. I'm running on both. Yeah, congratulations on the new baby, Raheel. Thank you so much. I wasn't out partying, for those of you wondering. Yeah. <laughs> it was going to wait to meet Joe's opponent. Yeah, speaking of babies. <laughs> Wayne having problems with his microphone here. Let's see if it fixes it. If not, then I'll introduce the fight. Please welcome. There it is. All right, please welcome Jesse Pantoja. Jesse Pantoja. <laughs> <He is. laughs> Wayne is not happy right now. <laughs> so Jesse Pantoja making his way out. I know the screen says something else, but trust us, it is Jesse Pantoja making the uh, making the walk right now to the Fury FC Amateur Cage for the second time, and he is coming off a loss to. Abner Castro, who we just saw in our first prelim fight, but he came out begging, did Jesse. Yeah, I mean, this was one of the fights that we kind of talked about last time we were down there because they were fighting each other and they were 18 and 17 yep. years old. So we talked about how Abner Castro was still in high school whenever that fight was happening. This kid is still in high school. <laughs> 17 years old, very, very tough competitor. He comes out to fight. So don't, don't let the record fool you. He comes out here to fight. So this is going to be a good one. I like these styles, the way they're matched up, because these two guys, it's, it's looking to be a banger here for sure. All right, let's take a look at our tail of the tape for this catch weight bout at 120 pounds. He's 17-year-old. As you mentioned, just Pentosia, 5'6", and loses on the reach. 65 inches for Joe Perez, the 21-year-old, getting his fourth amateur fight here. Joe Perez, and third for Jesse Pantoja. All right, both guys are inside, so let's get our official introductions. Here's Wayne Leggett. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by HKA USA is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series at a catch weight of 120 pounds. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing five feet four inches tall, he weighed it officially at 114.4 pounds. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, he holds an amateur record of two wins, only one defeat. This is Joe Perez! And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing five feet six inches tall, he weighed in at 118 pounds. Fighting out of Mission, Texas to take, he seeks amateur victory number one. This is Jesse Pantoja! Your referee in charge of the action, Joel Ojeda. Joel O'Hara, final instructions for our third fight on our prelims broadcast. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, we're going to be on UFC Fight Pass at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for Fury FC 70. 
as mentioned. You know these guys are going to come out throwing again. That's what Pantoja and Perez do right at the gate. Yeah, Jesse Pantoja told me that he wanted to get this fight over with early. He had some trick-or-treating to do tonight, so... <laughs> He hey, didn't man. tell me that. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he still has to go with an adult super fight. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, and be in by 10 o'clock. You're a good kid, Jesse Pantoja. Jesse's becoming one of our favorites, man. Yeah, for sure. Pretty soon he'll be 27. He'll be beating us both up. Absolutely. Joe Perez <laughs> now with that full mount raining down shots on Pantoja. Yeah, Pantoja's got to get to his side, and you're going to take a few punches from this position. He's got to get to his side. He's got to use his hands. He's got to he's got to shrimp out of this position. Does a big bridge right there. Gets right into an arm bar. Very very tight arm bar. Is he going to get it? That's how. Oh, it's oh a and tap. he taps. Beautiful arm bar transition there from Joe Perez. Beautiful submission. Jesse Pantoja again falling victim to those submissions during transitions. Really, really nice. Man, good work from Joe Perez. Moves his record to three and one. And when we look at the replay, Michael, I want, I want you to explain this. When he's in mount, just throwing down all those punches, he's not even looking at Pantoja's face. He was looking straight at his corner, it looked like, for instructions. I don't know if that was the best plan, because yeah. you kind of want to see where your punches are landing. But look at it on the replay. We'll look at the replay from the last one. You see right there, you see him. I mean, Raheel, the thing is, whenever they're in the mount, they're, you know where he is. Yeah. Let's go inside to Wayne to make this official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes one minute, five seconds into the very first round. Declaring a winner by tap out due to an arm bar, Joe Perez. Yeah, here we go again to look at that arm bar finish. You see that beautiful transition there? You see that arm stuck in there really, really tight. He pulls him over, he goes face down, and as soon as he does, you get that big tap right there, and that's the end of it. Beautiful arm bar transition. May have done a little bit of damage there. You see it again. Anytime you get that belly down arm bar, you're up against the shoulder heel. That's very, very tight, very difficult to get out. Man, beautiful work from Joe Perez. Mark that name down, three and one as an amateur now. Right future ahead for the 21 year old. Let's go to Wayne to meet our next fighter. Please welcome to the blue corner, Daniel Perez. Daniel Perez making his way out for this lightweight bout. 2 0 record, second time inside the Fury FC cage. Bot has an amateur uh, at Fury Amateur Series 39 in July and beat Graham Goldson with a flying arm bar. Man, it was slick going back and watching that. Yeah, yeah, very slick uh, submission specialist uh, Dan is Daniel Perez. Also, you know, those submissions are really difficult on guys like this. This is the worst kind of guy to face whenever he's a submission guy because he's six foot three at 152 pounds. And so, you know, it's one of those guys that's very, very difficult to deal with. Any of you jiu-jitsu guys know exactly what I'm talking about, especially the short, stubby guys like me. Uh, that are 5'10", the 6'3 guys with those long legs are very, very difficult to deal with. Fighting out of Corpus Christi, representing South Texas Fight Academy, is Daniel Perez. 2-0, continue, looking to continue the, the winning streak in the division. Very tall fighter, as you mentioned. That suffocating ground game is something to watch out for. Took dominant position until that arm opened up and the submission win yeah for sure and you see that uh, you know there's an 80 inch reach on, on Daniel yeah. Perez that's that's very very long and especially for guys this size you don't see it often let's go to Wayne to meet his opponent red corner Delvante George Devontae George Making his debut, highly anticipated debut for Devontae George, the 28-year-old fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, representing Bushido Martial Arts, the Bushido Warrior. Also coaches at the school. The kids love him there. He runs all the kids' classes, and it's awesome to see him giving back to their sport. 
now making his debut. I know all. I know the whole gym is watching. If they're not already here, you know, we'll hear the, the, the cheers in a second. But so cool to see that. It's got to be a treat for, for the students as well. Yeah, for sure. You know that that place is full of, of uh, locals. If they're from San Antonio or South, their, their fans are there. Uh, always very good turnout for the local fighters down there in South Texas. Uh, same here in Houston. Uh, and, you know, we go to other parts of the country the hill that don't show up for them as much, but here in Texas and most of the regions that we go to, these fans for these guys show up, but especially down there in South Texas. And there doesn't have to be as many of them for it to be twice as loud. Very, very rowdy crowd down there in Edinburgh, Texas. Okay, the final checkups and touch-ups here for Devontae George. Get some of the... Lay out the schedule here for you. We still have three more amateur fights after this one. Then we have a professional, uh, professional prelim as well. And then we'll start our main card at 4 30 p.m. Central Standard Time on the UFC Fight Pass when Carlos Lozoya, Cleveland McQueen go at it in our flyweight showdown the main event. But let's take a look at our tale of the tape for this lightweight bout. Devontae George, a 28 year old. Short on the height and the reach, and as you see, the 80 inch reach for Daniel Perez. That's a long ways out there, Rahil, yeah. especially when you're nine inches shorter. All right, let's go to Wayne for our official discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, following contest brought to you by Sheep Underwear.com. Is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series at a catch weight of 152 pounds. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing 63 inches tall, he weighed in at 152.6 pounds. Fighting out of Corpus Christi, Texas, he's undefeated as an amateur, holding a record of two wins, no losses. This is Daniel Perez! And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 153.6 pounds. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas. Today, he makes his amateur debut. This is Devontae George. Your referee in charge of the action, Nick Gonzalez. The Ghost giving the final instructions to Tarzan and the Bushido Warrior. Blue yeah. gloves, sorry for Perez, red for George. Yeah, here we go, underway. Let's see how that reach affects uh, uh, Devontae George. That nine inch reach disadvantage there. And it's not just the reach in the arms, Raheel. I mean, you see he's much longer fighter. He's got really long legs. Very, very difficult to deal with. 6-3 fighter Daniel Perez looking to continue his winning ways. Ooh, and Devontae George kind of pulled him down and right in the mount. Went for that uh, that hip toss there. Unsuccessful there. It's really difficult to get that. He does have the underhook on the other side. He did duck under that other arm. And so he's he's kind of going around and you see uh, Daniel Perez kind of reaching for that Kimura grip now. He's able to get that, but if hard you, to pull from that position, it right? It is. It's going to be very, very difficult. Um, and as a matter of fact, a lot of times I give it to him just to get that there. Very nice reversal. Devon George right into a head and arm position. Back into that top half guard. But you saw Daniel Perez had that hook under on the left side. That's something I really like to do whenever I'm, I'm in that half guard position. I don't like to get it all the way back. I just like to get that hook. And they kind of transition to submissions from there. Devontae George got to be very, very careful here. I'm sure he's aware of the dangers that, that come from this position. Perez isolating one arm. He let that go. Probably a bad idea to let that wrist go. See if Devontae George can dole out some punishment from this position. He is lowering that shoulder into the chin of Perez, uh, for Perez. Yeah, you see he's doing the right things. His hips are staying very, very heavy on that leg, on kind of the back of the hamstring of Perez. Staying very, very heavy there, making it really difficult. 
it's, it, you, you kind of need your knees together. You kind of need them both at the same position uh, to be able to transition to that arm bar. And Devontae George doing a good job of making sure that he can't do that. 45 seconds left in round one. Here's a question for you. When does grown man strength hit? At what age? Because you got Devontae George at 28 and 23 for Daniel Perez. Yeah, there's that triangle choke locking up. But in my opinion, we're here with 27 to 34 is a man's Ooh. prime. This looks oh, like that's it is going to be straight. Oh, and that's it. Tight. Tight. Man, what a tricky submission there from Perez. Devontae George giving a verbal tap there. Woo. Very unconventional straight arm bar there from that position. Does it again, Daniel Perez, another win via arm bar. Man, that is <laughs> Yeah, man, you're able to get those fulcrums in places that people with regular limbs just can't do. You know, I've, I've trained against guys that are like this, like Kevin Holland and those kind of guys that, man, they can just do things that normal grapplers and normal fighters just cannot do. And it's something you, it's really, really difficult to train for. Just one mistake from Devontae George, who was in control pretty much the entire round. That's all it took, and Perez with a huge win. Let's look at our highlights here. Yeah, Perez staying very, very patient. You see that high guard trap right there. He kind of tries to switch to a, to a triangle, and then all of a sudden he sees that the arm is available right there, and he pulls that arm. You see that fulcrum right there. It's very, very, it's been in the other way. He's doing a very good job. That's a very unconventional arm bar. That's, that's very, very tricky from Daniel Perez. Nice finish. Ooh, that could have been super bad. Good on him not to pull it all the way because that could have been really bad. And gets the tap. Does Daniel Perez moves his record to 3-0. and oh. Here's Wayne to make this official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Nick Gonzalez calls for a stop to the action. Two minutes, 33 seconds into the very first round. Declaring your winner by tap out due to a triangle, Daniel Perez. <laughs> nice dance moves there yeah. from uh, Daniel Perez. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Huge win. And hey, nice to see Devontae George make his debut and see. Uh, excited to see him back inside the Fury Cage, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see him in not too long. It looks like he got out of there pretty unscathed. Absolutely. Let's go to Wayne to meet our next fighter. Please welcome to the blue corner for your next fight, Logan Sanders. Logan Sanders making his debut. Fighting out of Pekka Tonika, Illinois. Pekka have you heard of Pekka Tonika? Oh, yeah, beautiful country up there. No, I've never no. heard of that ever. <laughs> uh, Is it right outside of Springfield? Because yeah. I only know two cities yeah, in she, Illinois. Yeah, Chicago and Springfield, and I can't name another Come one. Come on. Let's yeah, see. I can't name another one either. Who can get the the third city? This is what we've come to, guys, as Logan Sanders makes his uh, walk to the cage, getting his final check. Okay, I've got Springfield, Chicago. Oh, man. Man, I'm sure there's, a, there's, there's another some. one I'll think of here in a second that I'll be mad that I didn't think of. Or it'll be a city that I didn't know was in Illinois. Yeah. So I'm geographically ignorant. I'm trying to think of some suburbs or something. <laughs> Man, this is bad. All right. We'll think about it. As Logan Sanders is inside. Let's go to Wayne to meet our next fight. Please welcome to the red corner, Joshua Quintero. Joshua Quintero, third time inside the Fury Amateur Cage, has a record of 0-2 in that cage with Fury. Last loss to Ricky Fiorichetta at Fury FC 61 in May. And all his fights have gone to distance, so he's a guy that he's patient, needs to be a little bit more aggressive in my opinion, going back and watch some of his fights. Did get Ricky pretty early, he caught him early in round one, but just couldn't get the finish. And that's something I think uh, Quintero needs to work on. Yeah, and it's it's always interesting to me, like, you know, I can, we can look for here and we do our research on these guys and we can see when they've gone to decision. 
we can assume that they don't take a lot of chances and that they're you know they're kind of in it for the long haul and especially whenever they're losing those decisions uh, you can see that you know it, it kind of makes you feel like they're not taking a lot of chances and that's the case here he doesn't take a lot of chances he's very technically sound but like you said whenever he gets somebody trapped he's a little bit reluctant to go in for the kill and that's something he's gonna have to get over to just progress and get some wins here in the cage we look at our tail of the tape brought to you by Bump Box for this band of weight bout the 30 year old Logan Sanders short on the height and the reach both guys did make weight for this amateur bout let's go to Wayne to make or let's go to Wayne for our official introductions Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Space City Collective is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Bantam Weight Division. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. Standing five feet two inches tall, he weighed in officially at 134.6 pounds. Fighting out of Pecatonica, Illinois, today he makes his amateur debut. This is Logan Sanders. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 134.6 pounds. Fighting out of Mission, Texas, today, he seeks amateur victory number one. This is Joshua Quintero. Your referee in charge, Frank Colazzo. All right, final instructions from Frank Colazzo. I got the city, Evansville, Northwestern. I know right. I, my geography is based on college football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For both of us, it's just football teams. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and maybe if they have a baseball team or a rugby team. Yeah. We can get you on that as well. Yeah, for sure. Good aggressive start here for Quintero in the, uh, in the red gloves, Sanders in the blue gloves. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that was Quintero taking Sanders down or if it was Sanders kind of dragging Quintero down with him and maybe wanting to be on the bottom. Mm. Looks like he has a really aggressive bottom game here so far. Trying to straighten that arm out. He's a little out of position there. Logan Sanders representing strong arm MMA and Quintero flow 956. Yeah, Logan, the shorter fighter, you see how I'm kind of going up to high guard there and then kind of put it back down. Even though he had it, you know, some shorter guys with the shorter limbs sometimes have a problem locking up that triangle. But if they do lock it up, it is tight mm. and it happens quick. He's had a lot of attempt here. It's, he's really going for the almost lot of sweep. He's trying to sweep around and come up on top and sit on top of that shoulder. He's got to get heavy on that shoulder, though, once he gets him down and up to his back. A little bit of a technical mistake there. He got the transition correct, but a technical mistake whenever he got to the finally got to the top. Didn't get his weight. Kept his weight on his knee. Didn't get it on his butt to kind of keep it on that shoulder. Halfway point, round one. Then you see Logan Sanders on his hip. You know, he's not flat on his back. He's, he's staying on his hip. He's got that shield in with that right knee. He's doing a good job of kind of minimizing the damage. Controlling the posture of Quintero. Quintero throwing some punches. Showing that he is working on getting some finishes, being a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, and you see that arm across. Now, there is no one plot of finish from here. He's got to try that arm bar transition. Like I said, this is going to be real. If he locks up this triangle, this is going to be really, really tight. Anybody with short limbs, uh, the black belt named Wesley Gann, if he ever gets you in a triangle, it takes a truck to get him off, and you might die before those things are unlocked. Looked like he had it locked in place, just didn't pull the angle correctly, and still trying to work it a little bit. It's that left arm. Still in there, yep. Yeah, he's a little bit far down his back, but like I said, when you've got shorter limbs, these things become really, really tight, really, really fast. He needs a little bit more angle. He's got about seven seconds left, and it only takes about six, between six and eight to put you down. So very tight, may finish the round here. Very tough on the call, Raheel. Yeah, because the whole time, Quintero's still punching. Yeah, good control like, by yeah. Quintero. Top, he was on top, but nice submission attempt there from Logan Sanders. 
Let's take a look at our round one highlights. Yeah, see, Logan kind of dove in there and kind of drug him down, maybe on top of him a little bit. Going for that single leg, they kind of spun around, and instead of disengaging, Logan kind of brought him down with him. You see that triangle, you see how the heel on the left foot's kind of far down his back a little bit. You got to make that a really hard angle right there. Get that leg clear of the neck. Get that foot clear of the neck and get that gate leg over and close those really, really tight. So really close to being a uh, submission, uh, but but not quite there. Gutero survives the round. We go to round two. He's in a terrible place there. Yeah, difficult one to call. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I bet either of the coaches either think they'd both won or both lost. Knowing coaches, they're probably saying, you lost that round. Come yeah. on, we got to turn it up. That's what they should be yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> and you see Quintero is not like a big, big shot. shot there. That's He's down. Logan Sanders is down. He's landing some big shots there. Logan Sanders covering up. He's got the back. Again, now goes to the mount. A lot of punches coming down from Quintero. He turns his back. He's got his head, hands by his head. They're not going to allow this to go for long. Why is Quintero stopping? He has to keep throwing punches. See, he almost stopped the fight. Man. He was almost there. Here he goes again. Quintero has shown that so many times in his young amateur career where he catches somebody and just unable to finish the fight. Man, he yeah. looked like he had this one. But Frank Colazzo said, I didn't see a little bit more. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it just, it, it seems to lack the killer instinct just a little bit. He's got to go after that. This fight should be over. They should be, you know, talking, to, he should be up there hugging his coaches right now. Instead, he finds himself in top control, but dealing with Logan Sanders, who survives that onslaught. Yeah, and there's, I mean, even though he's on top, there's not a lot, he's not putting a lot of pressure. He's not, you know, throwing a lot of punches here. And so he's, he's kind of allowing Logan Sanders to recover a little bit, which is just a bad idea. We've seen Logan Sanders that he's, he's you know, fairly savvy from his back. Uh, he does have some submissions from there. And it's just not something you want to play with. Until he lands another nice, solid punch there. Has to be careful, as you mentioned, Logan Sanders is going to try to pull something here. Don't want to go in with no game plan. Yeah, lost connection on that hook flip there. Did Logan Sanders a little bit, but yeah, man, Quintero has just got to get, he's got to get these, these things finished. The elbows are not legal from the top. The straight down elbows are not legal from the top and the amateurs, but it's a good striking position that he's from in top side half guard. And you see right here, he's, he's let him go over the top of his head. If Logan gets that angle, he's going to, he's got the angle now, and he's got more time. There's 30 seconds left here. Logan Sanders is going to finish this triangle here. He's going to squeeze those legs together. And like I said, it takes about eight seconds to get this, to get this fight finished. If Logan Sanders will change that angle just a little bit, he's doing the right thing. He reclosed that gate. This is going to be very, very close. Just needs to squeeze those knees together. He's trying to close the gate down, like, kind of on his ankle a little bit. He's a squeeze those knees together. Got about eight seconds left. Can't continue to fire close. Man, another round wow. comes to an end with Quintero in a world of trouble. And Sanders unable to complete that choke. Oh, man, this is making me, this is giving me a heart attack today. <laughs> three both potential guys. finishes. Yes. Yeah, three potential finishes and both guys, you know, not able to do it. Oh, look at that shot. That was so beautiful, Michael. Yeah, and you see here, he dropped him. He landed a couple of clean shots. Sanders is just covering up. If he, all he has to do is keep throwing punches, and even if they're not landing clean, keep throwing punches from this position, and this fight is stopped. You can see the referee is leaning forward. He is one step away. He's probably one or two punches away from stopping this fight. Lands some good damage here again on the ground, and then falls right into a triangle. Beautiful triangle setup, beautiful triangle transition. Just not able to get the gate closed for long enough. I couldn't see his right arm. Was that in between just buying enough time? It looked like the right arm was in between the leg and body. 
Yeah. So that, maybe that just popped a little bit because yeah. that should have been done. That, that man, that was imperfect. Yeah, and it's you know that shouldn't matter. A technically correct triangle, but again, whenever you have short limbs, that angle has to be really, really hard. So you need a little bit more angle. He needed that 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 gate leg down closer to the ankle instead of closer to the toes. Once you get it down close to the ankle, it's really, really tight. And uh, you know, of course, with the angle. You know, if he gets that, makes that little transition, this uh, this fight's over. Big left there from Quintero. Final round. In our fifth fight so far. Yeah, I'd like to see what Logan Sanders could do from the top if he was yeah. on the ground and on top because he seems to have a decent ground game. He's you know he's locked up two triangles here, not able to finish either one of them. One was maybe because of time. He didn't have time to get the transition complete, but the second one probably should have finished that. I'd like to see what he does from the top, but he's extremely tired right now. The striking of Quintero gave him the win. Sanders' first fight as an amateur. Can't even imagine what he's dealing with mentally right now, going the distance. Yeah, well, I can tell you, he is, he's feeling it right now. He's got a huge kind of uh, energy dump going on right now, and he's, he's in the third round. And this is the part where, you know, this is what the amateur fights are for, is this third round right here. You get used to feeling this, and you, you get to know, like, how hard it is and how hard you need to train. You know, he knows how hard he trained for this fight. He still wasn't able to finish three three-minute rounds without getting without getting tired. Now imagine that's five-minute rounds. There's three of them. It's a. It seems like a whole a extra lifetime. Just about a minute left in round three. Yeah, and I don't know how they're going to judge this this scorecard, Raheel. I mean, yeah. Uh, Quintero did the damage, but got caught in some deep, deep submissions there. He wasn't able to finish them, so I would imagine the first round was a toss-up a little bit, but the second round he controlled for most of it, except for the last 30 seconds. But he was in a deep submission attempt, so he did get out of it, but we'll see. It'll be a very difficult fight to call. Quintero still peppering in some punches. Yeah, there's an arm bar. That's a deep arm bar, too. He's got his legs crossed. He needs to uncross his legs and kind of walk his shoulders out or pull his head out and just go belly down. You got to pull with that core. You can't try to pull with your arms. He's doing the right thing. He's got it across the wrist, so he's in good position. He's got about 12 seconds here. He needs to let it go. He needs to go all out to try to finish this arm bar. Man, so every round finishes with Sanders trying a submission. Is this going to be enough of that? Is, we will go to the judges' scorecard. Wow. Man. Man, Logan Missed Sanders. Opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Missed opportunity. Logan Sanders again finishing the round in the submission of Quintero. Quintero's very tough. But man, there's just some very small technical changes to uh, Sanders' jiu-jitsu game, and he's got this fight finished three different times. And then also some very technical strategy adjustments for Quintero, and he's got this fight finished two or three times. Very, very difficult to tell who's gonna who's gonna be able to get this. Let's take a look at round three highlights. Yeah, you see, he kind of drags him down whenever he goes for those single legs. Quintero kind of he's kind of content with Quintero being on top. You see that transition over there? He's got that arm deep, deep in, all the way up against the shoulder. Not able to extend it out. But whenever you do this, you either got to turn your shoulder out and just pull your head out and go belly down, or you got to walk those shoulders back and get some distance there so you can try to get some power in those hips to extend that arm. Man, what a fun fight. By the way, we will be back next Sunday as well for some prelims for Yuri FC 71 in Houston, Texas. So shout out to everyone watching on our Facebook pages and our YouTube channel. Thank you for the interesting conversation throughout the entire prelims broadcast. As we get you ready for Fury FC 70 on UFC Fight Pass. So don't forget, next weekend we are back for our second to last show of the year. Let's go to Wayne to see how the judges score this. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by Space City Collective. Judge Ray Campos scores the fight 29-28. Quintero.
Judge Lewis Escalona scores the fight 30 to 27. Sanders. And Judge Guadalupe Chapa scores the fight 30 to 27, declaring a winner by split decision. Joshua Quintero. All right, split decision win for Joshua Quintero. Picks up his first win as an amateur. Going to go back and look at the tape and say, yeah. man, I had it right there. But nonetheless, a win is a win, and it's got to feel good to get your first one. Yeah, and Raheel, you hear that there's two very different philosophies from judges there. We had yep. 130 27 for one, 130 27 for the other. Let's go to Wayne to meet our next fighter. Please welcome to the blue corner, Albert Salinas. And that's the thing about these fights, these prelims fight. We kind of get a sense of what the judges value going into our main card where look sometimes it's going to be tough to score but it's nice to have kind of some background on how the judges are looking at the fights yeah for sure albert salinas making his way now to the cage the bandit fighting out of west La west laco texas west laco is that you say west laco i think this is the one that we had a we have to look up, right? Yeah, this is a discussion we had last time also, and I don't remember what our conclusion was, but um, but as a former fighter, I've taken a lot of shots to the head, so I don't remember yeah. stuff like this. <laughs> I have no excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Black Star Kickboxing, fighting out of there, so shout out to Black Star Kickboxing. Had a fight second time in the Fury Amateur Cage, had that draw against Taylor Andrews at FC 68 in August. It was a tough fight against Taylor Andrews. We'll talk a little bit more about that as Salinas makes his way inside the cage. But let's go to Wayne to meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Roy Gonzalez. Roy Gonzalez making his way to the cage for this featherweight bout. The River. Like like Ripper Roy Gonzalez, yeah. <laughs> Ripper. Yeah, Roy the Ripper. Amateur debut for this guy. Uh, coming from the Strangle Cartel in Hollingen, Texas. A lot of South Texas guys down there. The Strangle Cartel. That is a cool gym. Yeah, it is. We, we see a lot of gyms, and that is by far the most unique thing that I think I remember. Yeah, and you gotta be careful anytime you walk into a place with the main cartel in it down there in South Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a big thing there. All right, featherweight bout in our amateur division. We look at our tail of the tape. Roy Gonzalez. Short on the height, short on the reach. The age 22 year old, uh, 22 years old for both of them. So nice to see these fighters get in there. Both fighters did make weight. Albert Salinas. Wanted to watch him. Let's go to Wayne for our initial introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, your next fight brought to you by Renfo is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Featherweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 144 pounds. Fighting out of Wolosco, Texas, to date, he seeks amateur victory number one. This is Albert Salinas. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing five feet eight inches tall, he weighed in at 143.6 pounds. Fighting out of Harlan Jen, Texas. Today, he makes his amateur debut. This is Roy Gonzalez. Your referee in charge of the action, Joel Ojeda. I say Westlaco, he says Velasco. I think there's a spelling error on my end, so here we go. Blue gloves for Salinas, red for Gonzalez. Ooh, big kick there from Salinas. Yeah, both guys coming out firing here. Big knees as well for Albert. Ooh, nice shots here. Man. Wow, Albert.
here. Salinas is on a mission right now. This is the killer instinct, ladies and gentlemen. And Gonzalez survives that onslaught. Man, Gonzalez and now returning a... the favor. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, Gonzalez has an iron head there. He took a lot of shots there. Never even blinked. Came right forward. As soon as he, Selena stopped throwing, Gonzalez came straight forward. Tough fighter. Debut for Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez not one to spend any more time on the feet here. Trying to get that takedown there up against the cage. Unsuccessful. Good job by Salinas. Foiling that take down there. He's landing those shots again. That was a big kick as well. Oh, we got his back here. Let's see if Gonzalez is able to get back there. He tried to sweep his leg and he's to put that kind of put that hook in there in the back behind the Achilles heel and kind of push his foot his leg forward instead of the other. Go nice. Nice take down there. Almost gave up position there. Very, very nice. I think he missed an opportunity there to go into half guard or, or maybe even into side control. Give a little bit too much space there for Salinas. Salinas gets that knee back in. And gotta be careful here. You see that leg up on the back. Salinas is gonna try to push that leg around the head. There you go. Salinas has got those long legs also. That's a long up triangle. That's very, very tight. He's got a good angle there. The gates closed. Nothing's on the back of Gonzalez. You see, that's very, very tight. He also has an arm bar from there if he can get it straightened out. Is this going to be enough? His corner is calling for that arm bar. Ooh, man. Oh, he let the arm bar go. He, he almost had it. He, he let him kind of pull too far out. The fulcrum got past his leg. Not able to finish there. Very nice attempt there from Salinas. And Gonzalez survives. Another big moment in this fight. Ooh, Gonzalez. Quick. Yeah, Gonzalez giving up there. Had the mount. Got a little bit of light in his transition. And beautiful groundwork here for both fighters. Nice to see from the amateurs. Yeah, these guys are very evenly matched. Both guys striking well, both guys grappling well. Both guys exchanging spots in transition. Fight, Albert! Fight! Be strong! Very, very nice. Man, good first round. Yeah, nice first round. Salinas finishing on top there. But you see Salinas throwing these straight shots here, landing really, really well. I thought the fight was going to be over. Salinas with that killer instinct there, kind of, but Gonzalez come back, fires a couple shots of his own, kind of stalls Salinas there. You see him, he gets his back here, goes for that high takedown. Big, big slam takedown there. You see the, the arm bar transition is there, and he misses it. He pulls the arm out. Does a good job of getting uh, double unders here. Goes right over that, the back of that hamstring. Goes right over into side control. But finished on the bottom. But Salinas able to finish on top. See the damage on Gonzalez's face. That's the other thing about these amateur fights. You can drill everything during training. And you can kind of replicate that speed. But... Nothing matches that intensity of another guy trying to survive. Yeah, yeah, and it's, you know, another guy that, you know, when you're in training, the people you're training with typically care about your well-being. Yeah. These guys don't care about your well-being. They, they're trying to, they're in the hurt business. They're trying to hurt you. Round two. Ooh. Sounded worse than it probably was, but. Ooh, great shot there from Salinas. You see Gonzalez kind of giving him a smile, and guys, 100 percent of the time, if you if somebody smiles at their opponent, it hurts. Gonna play a little bit of psychology game there, but ooh, Gonzalez lands a couple shots of his own. This guy's just throwing now. <laughs> now Gonzalez bringing it. Enough to make Salinas think twice and backs out. Yeah, here we go. This is what fighting is about. Less than a minute into the round. Gonzalez says no more. Ties him up here. Salinas doing a good job of pushing the head down. But Gonzalez still able to get into the mat. Can't see Salinas. Looked like he wanted to go for that, that guillotine there. But a little bit a little bit off on the angle. Wasn't quite able to get his hands together. Now back up to his feet. Gonzalez taking him back down to the, to the floor. Salinas has a Kimura grip locked up. He's got it behind his back. This can be very, very, this can turn bad very quick. 
But Gonzalez using that to kind of sweep up to the top. But these guys are doing a great job right here. Oh, yeah, man. They're grappling, they're, they're, they're punches, their counters, they're really, really, really well matched. Side control now, transition into now for Gonzalez. Yeah, and you see Gonzalez gets a little bit of, a little bit light on his hips during those transitions. He's trying to be light, he's trying to be, you know, switched to that arm bar, wasn't able to do it, and Salinas is, is right back on top. That's something Gonzalez got to work on. He's got to be heavy up there on the mount. He's got to be heavy on those hips all the time. And there is an art to learning how to do that, learning how to be heavy. So there's beautiful up to that, going from side to now, gets it, but then just not heavy enough, as you mentioned. And Salinas turns it. Right now, what is Salinas working with? He's trying to get in the mount. Yeah, Salinas decided instead of going to the mount, he wants to get into a good punching position. I think he feels like the grappling exchanges, like he's maybe he's, 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 Gonzalez is a little tougher, has better submission defense than he expected, so trying to get in those good punching positions. He's in one now, he's just got to get, and now Gonzalez is trying to lock up that Kamora grip. Ooh, nice hard shot there from the top. See if Gonzalez is versed in these heel hooks or straight ankle locks. Good punches near the end of round two. Castellan is doing a good job of keeping his ankle all the way in, pushing that boot on, trying to get the ankle too far in and get any leverage on. Land some nice shots from there from yeah. that position. So not really a submission attempt. It looked like it was an attempt at an attempt, but actually just left his face open. Yeah, just leaving his face open. I've got both of his hands with that ankle, and Selena's taking taking advantage of that. Let's take a look at round two highlights. And see some more big shots. Big knee there from, from Salinas. Gonzalez backed up, kind of fell, kind of took inventory there for a second. You see both guys kind of landing here. There's nice exchanges here. Gonzalez holding back a little bit. Nice shot from Salinas there. And on the bottom, you see both hands occupied by this. Salinas being the longer fighter, able to land a few shots from here. Gonzalez thinks better of it, lets that go. It keeps that one ankle, keeps one hand occupied to try to block those shots from Salinas. Man, he ate those flush right out of the ear. You know, his head's going to be ringing a little bit. Oh, yeah, nice fight IQ, though, from Salinas. He, he knows that he's not in the position. He's looking to, to do some damage from wherever he can. Gonzalez is very, very tough. And like I said, real, he's very well matched. Ooh, a big shot, though, from Salinas. Huge punches landing for Salinas, final round. Salinas going for the Ooh, kill here in the third nice round. Kick. Yeah, watch for those same combinations again. Very effective. Ooh, connects again. Yeah, Salinas kind of landing at will now. He's got his hands down. He's got to be careful. Yeah, Salinas has the reach advantage by one inch, but he just seems... Yeah, it seems so it's much easier. Yeah, 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 it's just easier to better. Yeah, he fights so much longer. He's on top again, man. He was landing so many shots where he don't understand why he closed the distance and went down to the ground. Very, very effective striking. Just a lot of energy used to go to the ground. And he hasn't been really effective on the ground. He's been, you know, he's been able to land a few shots. He's been able to counter a little bit, but his his offense hasn't been really, really productive from the from the ground. See, Gonzalez uses that, uses that transition to get the sweep. Gonzalez on top, trying to get himself into good punching positions. He's in a good spot here. But again, like you said, Will, it just seems like the legs of, of Salinas are a lot longer, and he's able to, uh, you know, yeah, he's more dexterity. He's like, yeah. yeah, he's really, really long. Uh, and only two inches long, taller, uh, and I think only a one-inch reach advantage. Yeah, or one inch. So yeah, not not a lot of, and of course that's what they that's what they claim, you know. Yeah. A lot of a lot of guys it goes the other way. He's he claims five ten. He looks like he's six foot or six one. Yeah. A lot of guys claim five ten. You look at him and you're in person at five eight. I believe these measurements are the ones after weigh-ins um, that the staff takes. 
Yeah, but we know how that goes. Yeah, you stand on those, but, yeah. <laughs> you can stand on those tippy toes just a little bit. A little nice enough ball sweep there. He's also doing a good job of kind of springing through that. By the way, shout out to the Fury staff. They did such a great job of putting everything together. Yeah, the way is the Got to do the videos, the photo shoot, compile all this data. Thank you to Sierra. She always puts it together for us. Yeah, Sierra doesn't get enough credit. She does a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 Nice job down there for Sierra. Sierra's looking like he's going to finish this on top in good position, building out some damage. Nice little on ball attempt there. About five, six seconds left. See if you can pull on that straight ankle lock. All right, Judge Scorecard, here we come. Exhausting final yeah. round, exhausting <laughs> fight. Deserve to lay down for a second. Look at our highlights for round three. Yeah, man, very nice here. And the, the round started, round three started with just some beautiful striking from Salinas. And she even switch here and goes for the takedown. Wants to get this fight to the ground for whatever reason. His striking was very, very effective. Nice one with a lot of sweep. Gonzalez pushes his way through that. And then here he goes, trying to get a takedown of his own. Able to finally get to the ground, but again, finished on the top. Hey, Fury Unleashed Podcast had a new episode post last week with our guys from Space City Collective. Check them out everywhere you get your podcast with host Wayne Leggett, Rich Burmaster, Eric Garcia, and the superstar himself, Diego Reyes, available everywhere you get your podcast. Fury Unleashed. Make sure you subscribe, listen, and review the podcast. How do we score this one, Michael? This is uh, this is a tough one. I think it's got to be Salinas. I think Salinas won, actually won all three rounds. Even though he did take some damage, I think the damage that he doled out was more. All right, let's see how the judges scored it. Here's Wade. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by Space City Collective. All three judges score the fight 30 to 27. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Albert Salinas. Congratulations to Albert Salinas. Gets his first win as an amateur. Nice display of mixed martial arts from Salinas. That was a fun fight. All right, we've got one more amateur fight, and then we've got a pro fight. So two fights left on our prelim broadcast, and then we will make our way towards the start of Fury FC 70 on UFC Fight Pass. So let's meet our next fighter. Here is Wayne Leggett. Please welcome to the blue corner, Nicholas July. Nicholas July. Second time inside the Fury FC amateur cage. Got a win over John Garza at Fury FC 69 last month. On the prelims, had that nice guillotine choke in round one. I can tell you this, Nick July loves to bang. And he caught his opponent in a shot, had, uh, had his neck exposed, and that was it. And he is a fun fighter. Yeah, and, you know, coming from Jackson Wink in the May, you know, he's got a stable of fighters out there that are top level fighters to train with. So, you know, you're going to get exposed to those high level transitions. You're going to get exposed to that. Probably been caught in quite a few of those himself. So he knows coming from a camp like that, when you have somebody hurt, when you have somebody staggered, you got to take advantage. They stick that neck out there. You got to see it, you got to take it, and you got to win. Nicholas July inside the cage for this Bantam weight bout. Let's go to Wayne to meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Adam Otta. The Sultan, Adam Otta. Making his way to the cage. Second time inside the Fury Amateur Cage for Adam. Won back in April at FC Amateur Series 37 over Logan Long via KO. Then, uh, you know, he just took his time in that fight. Flurried way near to and then got that nice stoppage. Got his win and on he went. Third fight for him overall. By the way, fourth fight overall for Nick July. 
Yeah, Raheel, this is a, this, I like this matchup. This is a great fight for the final amateur fight of the night because both these guys are very, very good. Both these guys could probably make the transition going pro either after this fight or the next one if they wanted to. Uh, but I think these guys have, you know, they're very young. I think these guys have championship on their mind. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape brought to you by Renfo Smart. Healthy living for this bantamweight bout. Even on the height one inch reach advantage for Nicholas July. 22 year old out of Jackson Wink MMA. Why don't you use your Telstra to circle something for me? Ah, oh, too late now. Next time we'll do it. Why don't you have a little fun for our final answer? Fight. Let's go to Wayne for our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by HKA USA is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Bantam Weight Division. Introducing to you first fighting out of the blue corner. Standing 5 feet 7 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 134.8 pounds. Fighting out of Rockland County, New York, he holds an amateur record of two wins, only one loss. This is Nicholas July. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. Also standing 5 feet 7 inches tall, he weighed in at 134.6 pounds. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, he's undefeated as an amateur with a record of two wins. No losses. This is Adam Ada. Your referee in charge of the action, Nick Gonzalez. All right, the ghost giving final instructions for our final amateur fight for this prelims broadcast. Adam Ada in the red gloves and July in the blue gloves. Nice little opening combo there from Otta. His nickname is the Sultan, but man, if you're watching this on replay, Adam, can I please suggest Adam all the smoke? Yeah. Like he wants all the smoke? Come on, that's a great nickname right there. Big slam there from Otta. Yeah, there's all kinds of things you can put after Otta mm -hmm. that would make sense. Otta no. Adam, you ought to know. That's right. Yeah, see? You can hire us as your marketing consultant, yeah. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're brilliant over here. So, we're here, we need to ask Nicholas next time we see him what, what the origin of his name is because it's it's pronounced July, right? Yeah, and July. You see how it's spelled. That doesn't spell July, but I'm sure it does in some country, but... It's got to be a Viking. Wonder what the, yeah, it sounds... It, Looks like a Viking name. Let's see if our staff can find out. July. Yeah, that's one where I'm glad he had, uh, before he fought his first time last month, uh, I was glad he had a previous fight because I was watching this tape and I was like, man, how do you say his last name? Because this is a tough one. Yeah. What would you have called it if you didn't know it was July? I would have just said Nick. Nick G. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we called him, Nick G. I called Wayne and I was like, Wayne, do you have anything? He didn't either, and then we found it, so Nick July. But we would have just asked him. Before. Yeah. Good punches there from the back for Otta. Houston, Texas represent. Yeah, Otta kind of dominating this round so far. He's, he's landed all the damage. He's kind of controlling from the back here. Really, really good ride. He's making uh, July carry a lot of his weight. Seemingly everything July does is a mistake here. Auto capitalizing on just about everything he's doing. Very nice punches here. He's got one hook in. And I really like whenever they, if you have a top hook, and here's all you jiu-jitsu players and MMA guys, pull that head up towards your chest a lot, flip them around, make that the bottom hook, and take the back. Try to get that right arm under the neck of July. 35 seconds left in round one. Ooh, big shot there. Yeah, July in a very bad position here. Otter just smothering him pressure here. Not giving him any room at all. Trying to get that left hook in also. See the advantage with those punches. Not trying to pull any kind of submission as well. Wow, that's a, it looks like our clock was a little messed up there nearing the end of round one. There's the claps there. All right. 
First round comes to a finish. All Adam Otto. Yeah. Adam Otto dominating that round where he opened. You know, right from the start. Took a leg kick there, and that was about it. Got, got July up against the cage. This big takedown here, and then it was kind of the story of the round. Kind of stayed on his back, kind of stayed in that uh, kind of half quarter position from the back. Got one hook in from the top. Never really tried to take his back there, cut, and he, you know, trying to transition to get that to do the bottom hook. But just doling out punishment the whole time, landing some big shots there from the back. You can always see Raheel, especially seeing the amateurs. Their body language tells a lot about kind of how they feel between rounds. You can see the two guys kind of, uh, you know, July there with his head down a little bit, shoulders slump, slumped down just a little bit. You see very excited, Adam Otta, very, very spry, a lot, of, a lot of spring in his step over there on the other corner, so very, very different body language going out between rounds. And then, of course, July comes out and lands two big shots right away. He's got a guillotine there. He doesn't have it quite locked up. It'd be very difficult to finish from here, but he's definitely in some trouble. Can't he transition squeezing from there. Yeah. hard, too. He's squeezing hard. It's under the chin. He's a little bit flat on his back. He needs to get to his hip just a little bit. He gets over to his side. Yeah, the hairline was starting to come out. I wonder how much he lost in the tank in the arms from that. Yeah, nice transition there from Otto. Nice way to keep himself out of trouble, but you're right, Raheel. His arms could be a little bit blown out. Yeah, because for a second, like for about five seconds, he was... He was squeezing with everything he had. Yeah, and it doesn't take long to, you know, for that for that lactic acid to build up in there, especially after the first round. That lactic acid starts to build up in those arms, and they get tired very, very fast. They get heavy very, very fast. Ought in a nice position here on the top. Has those feet elevated, making it very difficult for July to stand up. Quick programming note, this is going to be our last fight for this broadcast, so we will have a swing bout for you, so if you are here to watch Victor Gonzalez take on uh, Adam Adame, that is going to be a swing bout. We'll have that fight for you after our Fury FC 70 broadcast on UFC Fight Pass. Ooh, a world of trouble now for July. Yeah, Otta again, you know, kind of switched to that transition there. He wanted that choke, but yeah, I'm telling you, if he, there it goes. And that's exactly like we saw earlier. Arda just kept going, he kept throwing the punches, and the referee steps in and stops the fight. They're not going to allow you to take a lot of punches at this amateur level. And so, and rightly so. I mean, he was not defending what intelligently, and that's the requirement to keep fighting as an amateur or a pro, but they're just not going to let you take as much punishment as an amateur. And super impressed by Adam Arda. 3-0 yeah. and oh now. So it looks like a really muscular band of weight, so... Yeah. Good future ahead for the young fighter out of Houston. One year old, let's take a look at how he got this big win. Those punches just coming down. Left, right, left, right. Doesn't matter where. Nick Gonzalez goes, saw enough. Live was trapped, and those punches kept coming. Big win for the Sultan. AKA Adam on smoke. Yeah, and they don't those punches don't have to be hard, they just have to be clean. And so once they land clean and it's over and over and over cumulatively, they're just not gonna let that go very much longer. Good stoppage. Alright, let's go to Wayne to make this official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Nick Gonzalez calls for a stop to the action. One minute, fifty-six seconds into round number two, declaring your winner by TKO Adam. Congratulations to Adam Otta. Gets his third win as an amateur. Perfect record, 3-0. Can't wait to see him back inside the Fury amateur cage. Fun way to get us going here for Fury FC 70. We are going to head to UFC Fight Pass at 4.30 p.m. Congratulations to all of the winners. If you don't have your subscription yet, make sure you go to UFC Bypass, get that subscription in.
because we have a banger of a card for you. Carlos Lozoya takes on Cleveland McQueen in our main event. A very important flyweight bout. Plus so much more. The crowd is going to be great here at Burt Austin. We will see you on UFC Fight Pass at 4.30 p.m. on behalf of the entire Fury team and our production team. And for Michael Alexander, I'm Renil Rams Nali. Check out these highlights. We will be back for a swing bout on the YouTube and Facebook channels for Fury FC. We will see you then. Until then, we will meet you on UFC Fight Pass in about 30 minutes.